Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to show in this video how to use our new fully guided Crestal Sinus Lift Kit, but I'm actually going to show how this can be used in a freehand approach. So, uh, given the name, you might just look at this kit and assume it can only be used in a guided approach. However, that's not the case, and so what I will show here is just exactly how you would change the procedure and still be able to use this freehand, and so this is really a kit that can serve anybody's needs regardless of how you place your implants. So we've got our sinus model here. It's got a little rubber membrane intact, and I want to show going through the entire process. Now generally if you're doing this you're going to have a preoperative CT or some x-rays to know approximately how much bone you've got to the sinus floor. And so in this case on these models it's about six to seven millimeters. I don't know exactly. So let's start this process by using the very first drill in the kit. And as you look closely at this drill you can see that it is pointed on the end. This is a non-safe ended burr. This is actually an end cutting burr and it's really just a profiler to give all of the other drills a purchase point and the ability to have a hole that it can funnel into and so your drills won't want to walk all over the place. Okay, so always start with this drill. We'll place this into the handpiece and I've given myself some marks on the model just to indicate in the general area where I want to do these implants. So we'll place two implants on this mock model and I've got the handpiece set at about 1000 RPMs and so I'm just going to go right here where I want to start my osteotomy. And then just go in. This is only two and a half millimeters deep. So we know that we're well short of that distance uh, based on the measurements that were taken preoperatively. Let's do one more in this site. And as you can see, I drill down until the built-in key actually bottoms out on the bone. Now that is your guided key. So if you're using this in a guided approach, that would be what the surgical guide was engaging and this would be your stop up here. However, since we're doing this freehand, this acts just like a drill stop on your drill. So when you push this in, you're not going to be able to drill any deeper than where that stop bottoms out. Now, if you remember the preoperative measurement, we said we had about six millimeters to the sinus floor. And so unlike when you're doing it fully guided and you need to progress through each of these individually so that this built in key can engage, here, since we're using it free-handed, we can just jump to a drill that we know will go close to the sinus floor, but not go all the way to the sinus. So I'm jumping right here to the five millimeter length, as you can see right here. And we'll now just take that into the osteotomies and we'll continue these on and go a little bit deeper until this stop bottoms out. All right, so we bottom out at five millimeters. and then can repeat the process on the anterior side. So you notice that after I've used that initial profiling drill, there's no tendency for the drill to walk at all. And so that keeps you really centered. So just make sure that you nail it with your initial drill and uh, get the positioning that you want in the crest so that you don't have to adjust that and try to scoot it over. Now we'll go up to the six millimeter drill. And since this is roughly the, the distance I expect to break through at, we need to slow down at this point because now you need to start checking for when you gain patency through that sinus floor. Now I have the advantage here of being able to look and tell that I'm not through, but if you're in a clinical setting, you're not gonna be able to see that due to blood. And so what you wanna do is actually take this drill and insert it into the osteotomy, not running, okay? And as I do that, do you see how taking it all the way to the bottom of the osteotomy, I bottom out and yet that drill stop is not touching the bone just yet. And so what that tells me is that there's still bone ahead of me. And once I know that that's the case, I can just step on the pedal and go one millimeter deeper. All right, we've gone now until that bottoms out. Let's repeat the process on the anterior side. We take this all the way in. It does not bottom out, which tells us there's bone ahead of it. So let's step on the pedal and go one millimeter deeper. So with that done, I'm going to switch out and go to the seven millimeter length. There's no way just from tactile sensation to know when you've broken through the sinus floor. And so you want to make sure that you learn that by whether or not the stop goes all the way to depth. 
So here again, I thought I would break through on that last drill, but as I am seeing, I'm not through yet. There's still a gap between the bottom of the built-in key and the crest of bone. So since that's the case, I'll step on the pedal and go one millimeter deeper. And then repeat the process on the front. Still not through, step on the pedal, go a little bit deeper. All right. Now I would guess that we broke through right there, but I don't know just yet. And I don't want to have to depend on tactile sensations, so I'll take the next length of drill. This is your seven millimeter length. And I'm gonna go all the way in as deep as I can. And notice here that I went all the way to depth and the stopper is bottoming out on the crest of bone even though I haven't even run this drill yet. And so what that tells me is that we broke through the sinus floor with the last drill that was used and I've not really risked pushing on the membrane here. As you can see from the bottom side, I'm pushing this all the way up and yet it's not damaging the membrane. There's only the possibility of me pushing about one millimeter of height on that membrane. So without even running it, I just take it out and I'm gonna check the other side as well. This one still has a bit of a gap here, so I'm not through on this one yet, and so this must be a sloped sinus floor. I'm gonna go one millimeter deeper. And we're done on this site, on the distal one, and so I just need to see if I've broken through on the anterior site. Now I'm going up to the nine millimeter length. And I take this one in, and this time that one bottoms out completely without me even running the drill. So on both sides now, I'm all the way through, and we're ready to begin the lift. So with the sinus floor now patent, we'll grab the graft carrier instrument. This is just going to allow you to hold the graft material in proximity of the surgical side a little bit easier. And this is definitely something you would typically do uh, two-handed. You would need an assistant holding the graft and that would allow you to kind of scrape this in. I obviously don't have an assistant here, so I'm gonna just carry it over and kind of dump it into the sites. And you don't want to completely fill this up. If you completely fill this up, you'll find difficulty in condensing this. You want to just go about halfway up uh, the sides of the osteotomy and then grab the condenser that corresponds to the depth you broke through at. And it doesn't hurt to also go a little short of that length. So I know one of them broke through at eight millimeters and the other one broke through at nine. I think we're perfectly safe just to use the eight millimeter stopper. And what this will do is allow us to condense that bone, but not have to worry about pushing up on the membrane with our actual instrument, but rather just to let the graft do all of the lifting of the membrane. And honestly, what I typically would do in a real case is before introducing any graft material, I would introduce a collar plug. Usually I would cut a collar plug into about three pieces and poke all the little pieces up through each site. Uh, or even better would be PRF. If you have access to a, a blood and can spin it down, then placing PRF is probably the ideal material to put in first. All that really does, and it's not a requirement, but what it does is just provide a bit of a cushion. So if you have any sharp areas on your particles of bone, uh, those are not going to come into direct contact with the membrane, and rather you'll be able to start the lift, create that cushion, and then introduce your graft material. I don't have that here, and this is just a model surgery, so we're not gonna do that. I'm just instead going to take the eight millimeter stopper, as you can see right here, and now begin condensing this graft material, okay? So when I do this, you don't wanna just jam it in and poke real hard. Rather, what you wanna do is kinda of wobble it back and forth, and as I'm doing that, you can see how it seems to be going a little bit deeper, but then it's eventually going to bottom out on the crest. You have a built-in stopper on this condenser, and that's going to prevent you from being able to push too hard. Now we'll grab another load of bone. We'll introduce it into the osteotomies. And just repeat the process. We're going to condense that slow and easy. Nice wobbling motion to condense down. All right, so if I was to turn this over, you would start to see that we've begun to get just a little bit of lift. And that lateral wobbling motion that I'm doing ensures that the bone gets condensed out laterally. You don't all, we don't want it to all just go straight up. You want it to condense out and create a bubble of bone or a little dome. So I'm gonna repeat this process a few times and 
introduce enough bone, maybe three, four loads of it. And then typically what you would want to do is take a PA and evaluate how much lift you've achieved at that point, because there's no way to predict how much bone exactly it's going to take to accomplish the amount of lift that you want. Some sinuses have a uh, very wide base to them, and thus it's going to take a lot of bone material to accomplish a fairly small lift. Whereas if it's a really narrow sinus, it's not going to take much bone at all to be able to lift it as much as you need to. So I would usually recommend doing about three to four loads of bone, take a quick PA, measure the amount of lift that you've achieved, and then you can judge from that how much more bone you're going to need to add. So let's pretend that we took a PA, we take a look, and the lift is going well. There doesn't appear to be any graft particles escaping. If you're having graft particles escape from a perforation that you didn't know you caused, it'll look kind of like smoke escaping from a chimney as opposed to just a well-formed dome. Um, that should be a really rare occurrence using this kit. Um, knock on wood, I've actually never experienced a perf with this kit, although I'm certain it can happen. If it does, then you would just close up, come back at eight weeks and repeat the lift, and usually you'll find the membrane to be a little tougher this go around, and your osteotomy will still be present. By doing it at the eight week mark, uh, your osteotomy will not be fully closed in with bone, so you'll still have that there, but there'll be a plug of tissue, and you can just go straight to the lift and use your condensers and push that plug of tissue up through the osteotomy. It will be con connected to the bottom of the sinus membrane and you can just lift that entire complex up and then do your implant placement. So I'll time lapse this. I'm gonna do about three or four more loads of bone to get enough, enough lift and then we can place the implant. So I'm going to introduce one more load of bone and then we can go ahead and place the implant. Hopefully you will be working with an assistant and you will not have spilled two cc's worth of bone graft material down your patient's throat like I have here. But that should do it and I'll cover this so the bone doesn't fall out since this is just a model. But you see how much lift has occurred and you've got a huge dome of bone underneath the membrane here. And that's exactly what you should expect to see if you're doing this in a clinical procedure. Now with that done, we just need to give the osteotomy its final profile to match the implant that we're going to be placing. In my case, this is a 4.3 by 10 millimeter implant that I'm placing. And so the osteotomy drills for the safe ended sinus burrs, these all measure 3.6 millimeters in diameter. And that's just a little bit smaller than what I would like the osteotomy to be for a 4.3 millimeter implant. So what I'll do is just go back over to my standard surgical kit, and this happens to be the Blue Sky Bio Drill Stop Kit. And I really like these drills when I'm doing freehand implant surgeries because all of the drills have built-in depth stoppers. So when you're doing guided, you have depth control by just bottoming out on the guide. But typically with freehand surgical kits, you have to look at the laser markings that are on the drill, and it can be somewhat difficult to control your depth, especially in an area really close to the nerve and you're just worrying about going too far. You don't have to worry about that with these drills because all of the drills have built in stoppers on them. And so if you wanted to only go eight millimeters deep and no deeper then you could use the eight millimeter drill and take it until it bottoms out on the built in stopper, very much like the sinus drills. And then you know you're at depth and you don't have to worry about going too far. So the yellow color coding is the final drill for a 4.3 millimeter implant. And even though I'm placing a 10 millimeter implant, I don't need to take a 10 millimeter drill all the way to length. Rather, I just wanna make sure that I take the full diameter drill down deep enough so that it gives the entire osteotomy the correct profile. So remember, we broke through at eight millimeters, so this is just an eight millimeter drill, and I'm gonna take this and very quickly go to depth, and that's it. Now we are ready to place the implant. So grab your implant, it's going to go onto the driver, and you could use a ratchet or a handpiece driver. I like to use a ratchet hand driver. And we're simply going to drive this into the site. And
and you'll just crank this in until it's at the complete depth where you want the implant to be. This being a Biomax, I like to place it about a millimeter subcrestal. So we're equicrestal now, and I'm going to go a couple more turns to get it just a bit subcrestal. Just a little bit more. And then I always try to finish with a flat of the driver facing directly towards the buckle. So now we're at depth, and if I remove this, you can see that our implant is in place, and we would just repeat that process here on the anterior implant as well. But a very simple kit to use, and even though it's uh, labeled a fully guided sinus lift kit, and it does work great in that capacity, don't think that you have to do it guided. Uh, you've absolutely got the flexibility to do this in either a guided or a freehand approach.